Hello, Yoshi players out there. This is Yoshi Player here, and welcome to my newest review series. Every episode of The Loud House Season 1 Reviewed. I realize it's been a long time since I've done a video talking about an entire cartoon. The last time I did it was with the web series called Dick Figures, but ever since the show ended, I figured it was time for me to move on from Dick Figures and do something new for once. In fact, before I planned this video, I actually had a bunch of cartoons on my mind of doing every episode reviews on. In fact, the most prominent example I could think of was for Regular Show. I was actually originally going to do an every episode video for all the episodes of Regular Show until I realized that I haven't really caught up much on Regular Show and I probably need to rewatch the whole show if I'm going to review every single episode. No, I thought instead I should review the cartoon that I've become a really big big fan of, and this was one of the cartoons that actually managed to save Nickelodeon from being absolute garbage. And plus, I think it's just cool to review all of these episodes. It was Pie Guy Rules that started this whole thing, and I have to thank him for giving us the inspiration of doing our own every episode videos. So, for The Loud House Season 1, we have 52 11-minute episodes to talk about. So, in terms of seasons, The Loud House Season 1 has the most episodes. And yes, technically it's 26 episodes, because each episode is actually a segment, but when you number all of the segments together, that's 52 episodes for season 1, so it looks like we have a lot to get through here. But before I begin, I would like to give out a few new rankings that I'm going to be giving for each episode this season. It's much different compared to my original rankings, which I gave for the Dick Figures episodes, and I wanted to make these rankings a little bit more creative. The first ranking I have is the Glory House. This house is going to be for all of the episodes that I consider good. A luxurious house for all the good episodes to stay, and episodes that many of us would revisit in the future. This house may even contain some of the best episodes that the show has ever offered, even some that could stand out years later. Next up is the Average House, a fairly simple house, but it's reserved for all of the episodes that I consider okay or just mediocre. There's nothing too special about this one, it's fairly standard, a little bit small, but I think it could be a fairly nice place for all the Average episodes to stay. And lastly is the dreaded Garbage House. This house is going to be for all the episodes that I consider terrible. The house where all the bad episodes stay, and one which many people certainly wouldn't want to come back to. It's especially dreaded because it may contain some of the worst episodes the show has ever created. Alright, alright, I'll stop dragging that on a little bit more. So, with all the ranking said and my history stated out of the way, I think it's time for us to begin our journey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to begin the 52 episode journey of The Loud House Season 1. Episode 1A, Left in the Dark. Lincoln races to the sofa to watch the season finale of his favorite show, but the power goes out. Here we are with the very first episode of the show, and while this wouldn't exactly be my number one pick for a pilot episode of any cartoon, I do think Left in the Dark is a pretty solid episode. This episode does a good job introducing each character and uses them pretty well for the overall story, where Lincoln wants to watch the season finale of his favorite show, but it's more difficult than you think since getting the TV remote is a challenge in a house full of siblings. Lincoln's ways of distracting the sisters through the first half was enjoyable, and I like that the second half, even though it switches things up, still manages to be entertaining. And it all comes together with a really nice ending, where Lincoln and his sisters put the whole fight for the TV remote aside to spend time with each other, watching the footage they got from the video camera scared in the basement. So in general, the story itself is pretty good, and the comedy itself does offer some nice laughs. I do have some slight nitpicks though. First off, Clyde's involvement felt completely pointless. He didn't really do much in this episode and barely had any effect on the plot. Also, this is the first episode where we see his creepy crush on Lori that's going to be brought up many times in this video. Also, towards the beginning of the episode, it has some very weird animation. It's just weird how some of the characters look with their hair and their facial expressions, but I think I can brush this off because I get that this is just the first episode, and first episodes of TV shows don't usually look that good. Plus, the animators were still trying to get 
get used to the comic book style animation of the Loud House. Overall, I thought this was an enjoyable episode, and I think I'm gonna put it in the Glory House. It's one of those episodes that you have to watch, especially if you're just getting started with the Loud House. Episode 1B, Get the Message. When Lincoln leaves a nasty voicemail on Lori's phone, he has to erase it before she listens to it. So here we are with the first episode that's often considered to be bad by a lot of people. I've seen this episode a couple times, and while I did dislike this episode at first, I found some things about this episode that was actually kind of enjoyable. But before I get to the good stuff, I feel I should probably start this off by describing some negatives. First off, the way Lori is portrayed in this episode is easily the worst thing about it, and is probably the main reason why a lot of people don't like it. She comes off as extremely unlikable from beginning to end. When Lincoln first stumbles into her room, which was an accident by the way, she just yells at him and kicks him out. And then of course, she kicks him out of the bathroom even though he was still using it. But the biggest issue here is that the episode is expecting us to feel sorry for Lori when she gives Lincoln a new headset since she broke his previous one. The problem is that her attitude comes off as so demure with very little care that I don't buy into her truly feeling sorry. And of course we get to later where Lori deletes the message before she even hears it and of course scolds Lincoln for even leaving a message on her phone which honestly seems a little bit stupid because what if there was ever a time where Lincoln had to ring Lori for an emergency, yet she deleted it because she only wants to get messages from her precious boyfriend. I honestly wish that Lori actually did hear the message in this episode so we can get through her thick skull that she's an absolute jerk. But aside from that, I thought the rest of this episode was actually decent. I like the spy antics Lincoln does in order to delete the message off Lori's phone, and the funniest moments in this episode come from both Lucy and Luna. The funniest moments in this episode come from both Lucy and Luna, the former providing some amusing dialogue with Lincoln, and the latter being a part of the funniest gag. Lincoln was screaming his angry rant on Lori's phone, and Luna came in, playing loud music and blocking out Lincoln's swearing. Mixed in together with Clyde's reactions, the moment was just so hilarious. But once again, Clyde is completely useless again. I mean, sure, he does try to distract Lori, but then it leads to the most unfunny writing gag in the whole series, Clyde's nose bleeding at the sight of Lori. I'm sorry, I'm just so sick of this gag. It shows up so many times throughout the series, and it's not funny. It's just so tiring. I also heard some people complaining about the involvement of the twins in this episode, since they take their whole monitor job way too seriously. But honestly, I thought their involvement was fine. They were used as a conflict for Lincoln getting to Lori's phone, and I think it fits pretty well with the episode. If it wasn't for the high negatives this episode got, I think I could have put this in the glory house. But as it stands, it's not that good. As I said, Lori's behavior is so annoying, and Clyde is just completely useless. With all these opinions combined, I don't think it's fair to call this a bad episode. Yes, Lori's behavior is really bad, but I don't think it's enough to make it a bad episode. I think in this case, it's fair to put this episode in the average house, which I think just about fits. Episode 2A, Heavy Metal. When Lincoln gets bullied at school, he tries to keep it a secret from his sisters. Let's talk about the good stuff in this episode first. I do like some of the moments with Lenny in this episode, and she came across as a funny ditz. Probably her funniest moment was when she asked Lincoln where her desk lamp is, only to realize it was actually on her desk the whole time, and her response, so smart, to me was probably one of the funniest moments in this episode. I will say that I do like how this episode actually started off the relationship between Lincoln and Ronnie Ann. I find the two cute together, and this episode did start the relationship with them. Somewhat. Unfortunately, as positive as those things are, they're there are a lot of negatives that hurt this episode. First off, the sisters come across as extremely annoying in this episode. They all act so overprotective of him because the way they act feels so out of character. Okay, look, 
having sisters like Lenny and Luna being protective, that's fine, because they are Lincoln's nicest sisters. Or having sisters like Lori and Lola not give a shit is also fine too. But all of them act so out of character. They're supposed to be a balance. I do appreciate that Lincoln's sisters are trying to help him, but they suffer the same problem. They aren't aware of the actions that they do. They could actually make things worse. But what makes this even worse is the fact that all of the sisters completely lose their shit when Lincoln reveals that his bully is Ronnie Ann, aka a girl. This gag needs to die. It shouldn't be used in cartoons today. Sure, it may have been used in cartoons like Hey Arnold, but it shouldn't be used in today's generation. The whole girl bullies having crushes on their victims thing is stupid. The sisters then become complete idiots and are once again out of character before turning into a sister-nado, which was painfully unfunny. Along with the whole forecast thing that Lincoln was doing, what was the joke in that? So yeah, I'm pretty annoyed with this episode. But on the other hand, I can't hate this episode. There were some good stuff in it, but the negatives really hurt it. I think it's fair to put this episode in the average house, but on the very low scale of average. It was pretty close to being garbage. Episode 2B, Making the Case. Lincoln secretly videos his sister's most embarrassing moments in order to win a video contest at school. Oh boy, this episode. Making the Case, in my opinion, is an episode that angers me every single time I saw it. It was actually originally my number one worst episode, and while it's not quite there, I still absolutely hate this episode. At first, this episode seems like it could be pretty interesting, how Lincoln wants to get a trophy for something that he's good at. But after the first few seconds, it's made completely clear that Lincoln only wants a trophy just because he wants a trophy. Yup, Lincoln's not doing this because he wants recognition for something he's skilled at, he just wants a trophy because he's jealous of the other trophies his sisters have. But in the sisters' cases, they earned their trophies for something that they're good at, and something that defines them as characters. But in Lincoln's case, he just wants a trophy just because he wants a trophy. Not because he wants to define something about himself, but just because he wants a trophy. That's basically it. It's such a wasted potential. You could have made an episode giving Lincoln some development and having him discover hobbies he excels at, at making him who he is as a character. But instead, the writers thought that idea wasn't good enough and decided to give us a stupid story focused on not bullying others with online videos. Because of this, Lincoln is dumbed down, acting out of character and coming off as unlikable. Though his sisters don't look much better. Because after the sisters find out that Lincoln posted videos about them, they shun him out of their lives and act like they don't have a brother, which is further evident by Lucy's line, I don't have a brother anymore. This just goes beyond the line of being really angry, and it makes the sisters look completely unlikable as well. Look, I get it, it was right for the sisters to be angry in this episode. If someone uploaded embarrassing videos about me, I'd probably be angry too, but the way it's executed here comes across as really cruel. And that amount of angry cruelty isn't necessary, because here's the thing, Lincoln can take down the videos at any time. Yes, Lucy said the damage has already been done, but from what Lincoln posted, the videos would be quickly forgotten in a day or two like most internet videos, unless it's some viral trend. Not to mention, nobody at Lincoln's school really knows his sisters, so they wouldn't have to worry much. Lincoln has gone through much worse than his sisters and still wants to be a part of his family, yet when the videos of his sisters are online, they forget he exists and treat him like garbage. I don't see how any of this is supposed to be fair. So Lincoln decides to make up for this by posting embarrassing videos of himself doing weird things, which puts Lincoln in a much worse situation since the video stayed online and everyone at school knows him. The ending has Lincoln get some kind of achievement where he gets a custom trophy from his sisters with most improved brother on it. So yep, Lincoln finally got a trophy, but for nothing that defines him as a character. Look,
look, I get being a good brother is a good quality to have, but it's only a quality and not something that defines Lincoln as a character. Anybody can be a good brother. So what makes Lincoln stand out? His recognition is only for doing something nice for his sisters, not for something he's actually good at doing. This episode just keeps rubbing me in so many bad ways. It was such a big waste of an interesting plot. So in this case, I'm gonna have to put this episode in the garbage house. I really hope the writers don't make a mistake like this again. This was truly awful to sit through. Also, it contains one of the worst scenes in history, when the sisters fake out Lincoln by still being angry, only it turns out they're happy he did what he did. What a painful scene to an already abysmal episode. Episode 3A, Driving Miss Hazy. Tired of doing Lori favors to get her to drive him around, Lincoln tries to help Lenny pass her driver's test. I'm just gonna come out and say it, this is Lenny's best episode by far, since it's an episode that's largely focused on her. This episode just has a very good setup. It actually allows some good bonding between Lincoln and Lenny, which is my personal favorite bonding in the show, by the way. And if you want proof for why Lenny makes one of my top favorite characters in the show, this episode pretty much gives all the reasons to why I love Lenny as a character. The comedic moments Lenny has are quite enjoyable, and it's especially funny coming off the fact she's not trying to be funny, and it just makes it really funny, which is why she's one of my favorite characters, and definitely one of the funniest. When she learns how to actually drive in a way that makes sense for her, it feels like a much-needed accomplishment for her character, since she really does want to learn how to drive. I enjoyed how the other sisters helped Lenny and Lincoln since they're also tired of doing favors for Lori just for free rides. My only real complaint with this episode is that I wish we had a subplot involving Lori, since there's a scene where she tells Lincoln about what she did to Lenny. She mentions that she makes her siblings do things for her so they can get free rides from her, because Lori wants to feel more needed in the family. Because if Lenny got her driver's license, then Lori won't be needed anymore. I thought this was actually a great moment of possible character depth for Lori, but that ends up being pushed to the side to the end of the episode. I get that this is just an 11 minute episode, but we learn something interesting about Lori that makes her expand as a character, and seeing it forgotten about by the end of the episode was a real wasted opportunity to develop Lori as a character. Otherwise, I really enjoyed driving Miss Hazy, and I think it's perfect enough to go into the glory house. Episode 3B, No Guts, No Glory. Lori. Lincoln is chosen to be in charge when he and his sisters think Lori is too strict. So first off, I will say this episode actually had a decent setup, where Lori gets some justified payback for being such a tyrant with her siblings. But here's the big problem. This episode feels pointless. From beginning to end, nothing is learned and nothing is accomplished. After the siblings lock up Lori, now the sisters decide to make Lincoln in charge, which doesn't really make sense because why would you put the middle child in charge when you have two older siblings that could easily do the job just fine? But things eventually get worse here because by the second half, all of the sisters have completely gone out of control and become dumb little kids. Yeah. Yes, even the older sisters. I don't know why the writers thought it was necessary to lower the IQ of all the sisters just so Lincoln can get some payback for overthrowing Lori, even though all of them tried to do that. It's especially frustrating when sisters like Luna and Lenny are refusing to take care of everyone and just continue to act like five-year-olds just like everyone else. With the younger sisters, I can kind of understand it because, you know, they're not teenagers yet, they're just little kids who don't fully understand everything, but when the older sisters are doing this too, it comes across as so frustrating because they don't realize what they're doing. They keep damaging the house and don't care. In fact, I wrote a fan fiction sequel to this episode and I feel like its plot is portrayed so much better because the sisters actually suffer some consequences for their actions and Lori's bossiness isn't played up to obnoxious levels like it is in this episode. Instead, this episode seems to make us believe that Lori's bossy behavior is really the only way to keep everyone in check, and she doesn't learn anything either. She thinks the only way is to just be strict. And no, the ending with her playing video games with Lincoln doesn't count. 
So this entire episode was pretty much pointless. Nothing was learned in this episode. Nobody learned anything. It was all a waste of time. And because of that, I think it's fully necessary to put quite a frustrating episode into the garbage house. If this episode just disappeared from existence, I don't think anyone would give a shit. Episode 4A, The Sweet Spot. Lincoln attempts to claim the best seat in the family van for a long road trip. This was an episode I used to really hate when the show first started. It actually used to be in my top 5 worst episodes of The Loud House. But the more I watched it, I realized it's not the worst thing ever, but it's the second half of this episode that really ruins it for me. Before I say anything else, I just want to say that yes, I pretty much just gave away that this episode is going to the garbage house. But you'll understand the reasons why as I explain them. Now first off, I will say the first half is solid, and it's got some good pace and Lincoln makes sure that everything goes according to plan. I can actually relate to Lincoln's experiences in a crowded car on long road trips. All he's trying to do is just making the experience better for himself without bothering everyone else. And with the way Lincoln organizes all of the seatings, it seems beneficial to everyone, meaning that pretty much anyone won't get bothered on this trip. Unfortunately, as I said before, the second half is where things completely go downhill. The sisters find out about Lincoln's plan and immediately fight like wild animals over a spot. All of this over a fucking van seat. Because of this, everyone turns into dumb little children over something so meaningless. Maybe this could have worked if the comedy was there, but it wasn't due to the utterly nasty behavior from everyone. And because of their behavior, it causes the band to basically fall apart and they all can't go on their road trip. At the very least, the siblings did get consequences for what they did, but it doesn't help the second half at all. And worst of all, the siblings feel no remorse for what they did, ruining their family van, disappointing their parents, and hurting each other over a spot. They learned nothing. They're just upset that they can't go on their road trip. This episode had potential to be decent, but quickly soured on me with its ugly and awful second half. Episode 4B, A Tale of Two Tables. Lincoln attempts to join the grown-up table after repeatedly getting annoyed at the kitty table. The setup to this episode is actually pretty interesting about Lincoln wanting to sit at the grown-up table, but the problem with this setup is that a kid wanting to sit at a grown-up table sounds more relatable if it's meant for something like a special event or a party. When it's used for regular dinner, it isn't that relatable to me because all of my family sat together at the table. Everything about this episode is bland and the characters seem to know that since the majority of the siblings are dead-eyed with nothing to offer. Although I will admit, Lola pretending to be a vampire with french fries was really cute. Most of the energy this episode has comes from Clyde helping Lincoln. Oh boy, I could not stand Clyde in this episode. A Tale of Two Tables is a great example showing how the writers are pushing Clyde to become a fun character way too much. While training Lincoln to become more grown up and sit at the adult table, he seems too forced into the spotlight to provide comedy with instructions that I assume are meant to be funny. But they've been done in various other comedies before and don't feel fresh in this scenario. Seriously, the writers should never attempt at Clyde trying to be a funny side kick. It's just terrible. The rest of this episode is just predictable. Lincoln regrets sitting at the adult table and does everything possible to sit back at the kiddies table. Basically, Lincoln is back to where he was before. But unlike No Guts No Glory, where it started and ended with nothing happening, or with characters learning nothing out of the situation, at least with this episode, Lincoln does learn not to grow up so fast and enjoy being young, which is a moral decently well told. On the whole though, this episode is just too boring for me to care about, and I think I'm just gonna put it in the average house. It was kind of close to being a bad episode, but I didn't think it was that bad enough to earn the spot. It may have been nice to see once, but it's an episode that I'll quickly forget about by the end of this video. Episode 5A, Project Loud House. Lincoln has to get to school on time, but getting his sisters out the door proves to be the biggest obstacle of all. I'm gonna be dead serious, 
This episode should have been the pilot. I'm not even joking. Project Loud House is the perfect episode to describe this show as a wild and over-the-top animated show, but deep down as hard within its characters. This episode's story is just incredibly simple, and I love it. Lincoln wants to make sure there isn't anything going wrong so that he can make it to school and present his project that he was working hard on. And there's no frustrations involved, because as I said, everyone's just trying to get ready for school. No one comes across looking like the villain in this episode, since everyone was just trying to get ready, and the mishaps they have were just part of their character. This is exactly why Project Loud House should have been the pilot. It shows off all the personalities of each sibling and focuses on all of them, how these personalities would clash with one another and the unpredictable nature of some of the situations in this episode due to these characters. Everything here felt very fast and fun, never having a boring moment and keeping you engaged on what will happen till the very end with so many great moments standing out. Whether it's Luann's running gag with the water pail that she finally pulls off in the end after so many failed attempts, to Lenny saying how she would never chew gum and walk at the same time, which is something really fitting for her to say, to of course Luna providing Lincoln with the perfect music to help get everyone ready. All these stand out because they show off the best qualities of these characters, and what makes them so enjoyable for me. And then, once we get to the ending of the episode, it shows off the heart and kindness that we get. After Lincoln's project gets accidentally ruined by himself, his sisters decide to return the favor of him helping everyone get ready by being stand-ins for his project. This was, in my opinion, the best moment in Season 1, showing how the siblings all have each other's backs and appreciate the help given to them, and when the sisters are used for stand-ins, when Lincoln describes his family for his class, it all comes together perfectly. I just love this episode so much. Of course I'm putting it in the glory house. There's just too many things that I love about this episode, and not a single problem I have with it. It's just a perfect episode. Which, again, should have been the pilot. Episode 5B, Intense Debate. Lincoln is the tiebreaker in where to go for the big family vacation, and his sisters try to help him win over their side. This is the first of what I like to call a Lincoln torture episode, also filled with weak humor and a very bad ending. But I'll get to that in just a second. I'll just talk about some of the other issues I have. I didn't find anything particularly interesting or engaging with this episode. Basically, Lincoln is the deciding final vote for what their family vacation will be, so now he has to figure out what place he'll pick, even despite how one half of his sisters will be upset and the other will be happy. It gets to the point where now the sisters are being nice to Lincoln and doing things for him, to the point where now they're torturing Lincoln so he doesn't vote for the other vacation choice. Everything gets out of hand and all the sisters start fighting with each other and then all of a sudden blame Lincoln for not choosing. Did they seriously not understand what would happen if he didn't pick the other vacation spot? The sisters just made the whole thing worse. Why do they have to blame Lincoln for this? Now with all this said, this episode could have gone to the average house, but there's one reason why this episode is in the garbage house. And that is the ending. Basically, Lincoln realizes it's his fault for why his sisters are fighting with each other since they used them to relax, so he decides to fix everything by picking their original vacation choice, Scratchy Bottom Campground. All of this would have been fine, but then Lincoln is used as the girl's servant to make sure they're not miserable even though he ends up having a horrible time on their vacation. Now, I get the idea the writer was going for. Lincoln was going to make up for the girls pampering him, but the difference is that 10 people were pampering one person in ways that don't really look that difficult. In this scenario, one person is pampering 10 people in a way that's way more difficult than before. I don't see how any of this is fair. Even worse, all the sisters act so smug and self-entitled for Lincoln to take care of them, making me want to slap them in the face for their nasty behavior, especially since they were responsible for also torturing Lincoln throughout the rest of the episode. Lincoln had his heart in the right place for making this up for his sisters, but his way of doing so was way too much. Yuji realizes this is your vacation too. 
right? The moral of this episode also seems to be about not being selfish and using your family for personal needs, but it's hard to buy into it when the sisters use Lincoln for their own personal need and don't even feel grateful about it and make his situation so much worse. As a whole, this episode just makes me feel disgusted with everyone, and the ending just made things all the more terrible. Could have gone into the average house, but I think it's understandable why it's in this spot now. Episode 6A, Sound of Silence. Lincoln buys a pair of sound-canceling earbuds to drown out the sounds his sisters make. So, to the surprise of no one, this episode has actually been labeled as one of the worst episodes of all time. And yeah, I agree with the majority. This episode is terrible. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This episode goes into the garbage house. Now it's time to give out my reasons why. Sound of Silence is one of the most mean-spirited and cruel episodes of The Loud House. Punishing Lincoln all because he wanted some peace and quiet. It basically wants us to believe that Lincoln deserved to be punished in the end by throwing in a moral about not silencing out your family and spending time with them. There's two major issues with this moral. First off, the episode wants us to believe that each of the sisters also wants some peace and quiet, even though the episode never shows them being bothered by the noises from their other siblings. I can't really buy into your statement when you have no proof to back this up. And second, the episode focuses more on Lincoln being needed for favors rather than missing out on anything important with the family, which would have done a better job at convincing the viewer of your botched moral you had set up. While I found almost all of the sisters unlikable in this episode, Lola takes the case for being the most cruel. Seriously, this episode was so bad, it almost made me paint Lola as one of the worst characters in the whole show. The running gag in this episode is that if you make Lola angry at even the littlest of things, she will go extreme and ruin your life. And the stuff she does is so bad. Bad. She does stuff like spike Lynn's soccer ball, sell all of Lenny's furniture, and even killing a frog just because it ruins something that she likes. I get that Lola is supposed to be the character portrayed as a princess and that she doesn't want anything harmful to happen to her, but this paints Lola in such a bad way and it will cause a lot of people to really hate her, which I'm not surprised by this point. Throughout this episode, I just felt so bad for Lincoln. He did very little wrong and he is punished for all of the stupidest reasons. With that said though, the ending isn't that bad in my opinion. Opinion. It turns out Lisa was the only one who didn't hear about this plan, which I don't even get. And as a result, her experiment blows up and it causes all of the sisters to no longer be able to hear. Well, at least the sisters got some punishment for what they did. Yes, I know Lincoln also couldn't hear, but at least the sisters weren't able to either. That's what they get for being extremely unlikable. But I guess it's also a bad case of an episode ending on a stupid joke for an already terrible Terrible episode. Episode 6B, Space Invader. After Lynn and Lucy get in a fight, Lincoln agrees to let Lynn bunk in his room. I've already talked about this episode a few times, most notably in my top 10 unpopular opinions video, because a lot of people actually really like this episode. And for those of you who haven't seen the video, I'll just come out and say it again. This episode is one of the most definitive reasons as to why I don't like Lynn. She is my least favorite character in the show, who somehow seems to be a lot of people's favorites, which I really don't get. Because as soon as Lynn bunks with Lincoln, she quickly annoys him with various things like wrestling matches, loud snoring, and Dutch ovens. I don't understand how this is supposed to be funny. I pretty much named this as another Lincoln torture episode, but what's even worse is that he doesn't do anything wrong in the episode. He was actually the good guy in this entire scenario. Lynn is pretty much the one reason why I dislike this episode. Lynn is pretty much one of the definitive reasons as to why I really dislike this episode. She knows that Lincoln isn't enjoying this and is just going to keep doing all the things that annoy him just for her own amusement. Either way, it doesn't make her look good at all. And of course, her attempts at comedy are just terrible. They're actually worse than Clyde trying to be a funny sidekick. Like I said in my video, I'm not a fan of gross out humor or physical humor, and half of the jokes in this episode are just that. 
the one thing I did like in this episode was when Lenny was brushing her hair to try and make it look perfect, and the comment Lori says to distract Lenny from getting perfect hair, that was a cute moment, but everything else in this episode is just garbage. The perfect title for this episode to be sent straight to the garbage house. Episode 7A, Picture Perfect. Lincoln and his sisters try to create a perfect family photo to give to their parents for their anniversary. My thoughts on this episode are pretty straightforward. I have positives and negatives that help and hurt this episode without ever getting too annoying. I like the pacing of this episode with Lincoln trying to get everyone ready to take a nice picture, and I found some of the moments humorous, but the moral of this episode doesn't fit whatsoever. The message about being yourself doesn't apply for an episode when you're trying to look nice for a picture. Sometimes you have to put your usual antics aside so you can make something lovely for others. And I didn't like how in the second half we're supposed to be mad at Lincoln and feel sorry for the sisters, even though throughout the episode they're going against the idea of taking a family picture and just making things worse for Lincoln and we're somehow supposed to feel sorry for them. It also adds to the fact that the sisters keep making fun of Lincoln's previous gifts, which just comes across as a pretty annoying moment, especially since the sisters know that Lincoln is hearing them. Overall, this episode is going to get into the average house. Not the best, not the worst, just decent. Episode 7b, Under Pressure. The loud siblings make a bet to see who can go the longest without displaying their most annoying habits. I liked how this episode made each sibling's bad habit fit their characters, and they turned it into a game to see who can last the longest without doing their bad habit, leading to some hilarious moments for each character, from Luna trying not to do her fake British accent, or even worse, Swedish accent, which I found really funny, to Loan holding in any jokes she could possibly say before letting it out all as a sweet relief. And in the end, Lily is the one who ends up winning in a way that actually caught me off guard. I also loved the ending to this episode, because even though Lincoln loses the bet at the end, Lola decides to buy him underwear because she felt bad about him. And she tells him that if he can accept everyone's bad habits, then she and the others should accept his as well. This was a great lesson Lola learned, and it was some very good character development for her. This lesson can also apply to others who have to deal with those around them and their bad habits in real life. Sometimes you just have to accept them if you love being with them. With them. I do have one nitpick with this episode. I don't like how all the sisters immediately band together against Lincoln all at once as if none of them seems to disagree with Lola, making the whole 10 against 1 situation quite unfair for Lincoln. But then again, it wouldn't have led to that awesome ending with Lola. With all this piled up, I think this episode certainly should go into the glory house. It may have one nitpick, but on the whole, it's a very enjoyable episode. Episode 8A, Link or Swim. After Lincoln and his sisters get banned from every pool, he purchases a kiddie pool for himself. Just like Picture Perfect, my thoughts on this episode are pretty straightforward. I have positives and negatives, but nothing too overwhelming. I like the comedic moments in the second half of this episode, with the standout going to Luann trying to play Marco Polo with Lenny, which I found really funny. And I appreciate the message of this episode, how it's better spending time with your family over spending time alone. But my biggest issue with this episode is the same with Picture Perfect. The second half wants us to believe that Lincoln is the antagonist of the story, and that we should feel sorry for the sisters for getting kicked out, even though they were the ones that made things worse for Lincoln. I honestly feel more sorry for Lincoln, since he didn't even get to enjoy being in an actual pool and had to settle for buying a smaller one for himself. And then he couldn't cannonball, and when he did cannonball into the other pool, it ends up getting destroyed, because somehow we're supposed to see Lincoln as the villain in this episode. A simple rewrite of the third act could have easily fixed this by having all the sisters actually feel bad for hogging Lincoln's pool, and he would still learn a lesson in all this. In fact, I did a rewrite of this episode, where the sisters buy the pool for themselves because they wanted Lincoln to enjoy his own time in the pool, but he still learns that he should spend more time with his family than himself. I highly recommend you go check it out, it's in the link in the description. But as a whole, I think I'm going to put this episode in the average house. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. Episode 8b, Changing the Baby. Lincoln starts hanging out with Lily so she can be like him when he grows up. Overall, I found this episode pretty enjoyable. Lincoln spending time with Lily was really cute, especially since he was trying to introduce her to all the things he really likes since everyone else in the house is busy. So of course, the sisters see this as an opportunity to spend time with 
Lily and make her act more like themselves, and of course, mayhem ensues. The siblings fighting in this episode actually felt justified, since everyone came out looking selfish, as all they wanted was a sibling who can act just like them, only they forgot about what Lily wants and let her just continue to enjoy all the things she likes, which in this case is her blanket. I like how all the siblings learned this lesson, and seeing Lily spend time with each sibling was really cute, and it led to some amusing moments. Clyde also felt essential to this episode, as he feels both angered and confused by Lincoln spending all his time with Lily. His parts never felt overlong, and his part for the ending helping tie everything together for the characters I found solid. There's not much else for me to say, this episode definitely gets into the glory house. It's pretty good with a lot of solid comedy and a good moral behind it. Episode 9A, Overnight Success. Clyde comes over to have a sleepover with Lincoln, but things do not go quite as planned. Before I say anything else, I want to give a huge pat on the back to Nickelodeon for introducing a same-sex couple in a kid's cartoon. It was just so refreshing to see, and Clyde's dads come across as far more entertaining than Clyde himself which is actually kind of sad. But as for the episode itself, it's pretty good. I think I'm going to put it in the glory house. I like how Lincoln learns not to let his own plans get in the way of having an enjoyable sleepover and shouldn't let his sister's involvement getting in the way, since Clyde is fine with Lincoln's sisters being a part of the sleepover. Clyde is used well in this episode, although him sniffing the shampoo in the bathroom was pretty cringeworthy. Clyde never overshadows everyone, and each of the siblings do get a chance to shine. I enjoyed the fast-paced energy of the episode, and I liked how everything concluded with everyone getting together for the sleepover and having a good time. This is, in my opinion, a pretty enjoyable episode, and I think this is one I'm going to come back to rewatching a couple times in the future. Episode 9B, Ties That Bind. Lincoln overhears his parents having a conversation and mistakenly believes that they're planning to get rid of him and his sisters. When I first saw this episode, I actually thought it was pretty good, but the more I watched it, the more I realized I think it's more fitting for this episode to go into the average house. I enjoy some of the comedic moments in this episode, especially from Lenny. The setup for the story for the siblings actually believing that they'll be kicked out of the house was amusing, and I really like the message about the siblings sticking up for one another, no matter how selfish the other one is. However, the one glaring weakness in this episode is Lincoln comes off as pretty unlikable in the second half. I found it strange and mean-spirited to see him easily love the idea of being an only child and not worrying about what will happen to his sisters. It just comes across as really cold, though thankfully he does get a taste of his own medicine when he suspects that he'll be the only one that gets kicked out instead of the sisters. Overall, this episode is just average. It's nothing amazing, nothing great, it's kind of forgettable, but at least it does have some good things in it. Episode 10A, Hand-Me-Downer. Lincoln gets a hand-me-down bike from Lori that's too girly for him, so he borrows Lynn's cool bike instead. This episode is pretty boring. The plot is simple, with nothing to offer in terms of entertainment. Lincoln switches his girly hand-me-down bike with Lynn's more cool-looking bike, and everything you think will happen does happen. Happen. That being said, there are a few positives. Lynn is at least tolerable in this episode. She didn't get on my nerves that much, and she wasn't trying to annoy Lincoln, and when she's mad at him, it at least makes sense since Lincoln stole her bike and lost it. I also really like the moral of this episode, saying that you should make the best out of the hand-me-downs given to you. That's a good message to take away from this episode, and I can relate to it. But as a whole, this episode's forgettable and it's boring. I'm just gonna throw it into the average house. Not much else for me to say here. Episode 10B, Sleuther Consequences. After the toilet gets clogged, Lincoln and Lucy try to find the culprit. Oh boy, this episode. Strap yourselves in, folks. I actually have quite a few things to say about it. This was one of the very first episodes of the show that I watched, and from first witnessed, I couldn't stand this episode. But with that said, I will admit there are some positives with this episode. The biggest positive is Lucy. I really liked her in this episode for not only having the funniest moments, but because we got some real character depth that makes sense for her character. When it's discovered that Lucy clogged the toilet, it was by accident. Since we learn that she enjoys reading Princess Pony, she reads privately in fear that if her sisters found out, she would never hear the end of it, considering how they only see Lucy for being all about darkness and horror. This 
scenario makes sense, and we feel for Lucy. She never intended to clog the toilet, and because of her actions, she's scared to tell the truth and face the humiliations from the others, showing us that Lucy has some issues hidden in her. Lincoln sees this and realizes that Lucy, deep down, is sheltered and not great at opening up for people, and the fact that Lincoln takes the blame for it all really shows strong development between the two as she appreciates what Lincoln did. And Lincoln shows that he's willing to help his sisters in tough situations, no matter how embarrassing it may be. So yeah, there are some very positive things about this episode, but let's not skip around the fact that this is one of the most mean-spirited episodes of the show that I have ever seen. Lincoln goes through so much crap in this episode for doing nothing wrong and gets treated like crap from everyone except Lucy, of course. First, we have the beginning where all the sisters are laughing at Lincoln's costume and making fun of him. Now, this scene could have actually been both relatable and funny if the costume Lincoln was wearing actually looked silly. But because it doesn't look silly, it just comes across as really annoying and, of course, mean-spirited. The comments the sisters say should either be clever or just plain silly. Not to mention, you should keep it short and sweet. Don't ever make the comments hurtful or mean-spirited. Otherwise, it's too much and we lose the comedy in the situation. The comments the sisters make play off as more mean-spirited schoolyard taunts that forgot to be ridiculous. Moving on from there, the toilet is discovered to be clogged and everyone blames Lincoln for it, even despite the episode including flashbacks as evidence for why the sisters would blame Lincoln. It feels so forced because based of previous events, Lincoln wouldn't do stuff like this. It expects us to believe that Lincoln would act out of character in the flashbacks and do things that any normal person would already know are stupid ideas. What's even worse is that aside from Lucy and Lincoln, everyone else is out of character, with each of them all being cruel and angry. Even the nicer sisters like Lenny and Luna, why would you include them in this scenario? Throughout the episode, they provide very little to redeem themselves, although Luann's sleep joke was actually pretty cute. But then, things get worse by the ending. While I do like that Lincoln actually stood up for Lucy, even though it was embarrassing, when he takes the blame, everyone is shocked at first, but then quickly find the situation hilarious, with Laurie promising to make fun of Lincoln for the rest of his life over this. Lincoln is grounded, and the other sisters are free as they act so grateful about it. Oh, you sisters are fucking assholes! Seriously, the sisters deserve to be grounded for what they did. What's even worse about it is that the sisters act awful, and they get no consequences for their rude behavior. Meanwhile, Lincoln has to suffer all the consequences for doing nothing wrong. As I said before, I can't stand it when all of the sisters are against Lincoln while he's alone with no support, where they stick together for some dumb reason, like sisters always come together over Lincoln or some bullcrap like that. I wish we had episodes where at least one or two of Lincoln's sisters are willing to back him up and go against the other sisters, especially it's from Luna, Lenny, or any of the other nicer sisters, depending on the situation, of course. Seeing all of them agree to be mad at Lincoln, even if he did nothing wrong, is just plain annoying and mean-spirited, and it makes the sisters look really bad to a lot of people. If it wasn't obvious by this point, this episode definitely gets into the garbage house. This is one of the most mean-spirited episodes that I have ever seen. Sure, there are some positives here, but this episode is just so unpleasant I could barely come back to it, and seeing an image of this episode will always anger me. Episode 11a, Butterfly Effect. After spilling an experiment of Lisa's, Lincoln sets off a chain reaction that unravels the household. This episode has actually been regarded as one of the best episodes in the whole series, and it's pretty awkward for me to say I really don't buy the hype. It's funny, too, because I used to really, really like this episode. It actually used to be one of my favorites. But the more I watch it, the more I begin to notice some issues with it. The first half does a solid job setting up the story with Lenny becoming super smart after getting knocked out, Lisa giving up on science since her experiment failed, and Lynn getting kicked off her sports team since she's failing her classes. 
This is a good setup and makes sense showing the after effects of Lincoln not telling Lisa that he broke her experiment. But by the time Luna leaves to go on tour with Mick Swagger, Luann leaves to save the Earth, Lucy becomes a vampire, and Lily becomes a giant. That's when this episode throws the whole butterfly effect concept out the window and focuses on beating you over the head about how Lincoln is feeling awful for not telling Lisa the truth. Its way of getting across this point just feels too chaotic to make sense, and when it all turns out to be in Lincoln's head, I wasn't really that surprised. This episode has a decent moral, but it's really not that great. Honestly, it just feels really awkward to be in this place of calling Butterfly Effect an average episode. I don't hate this episode, I certainly don't think it's that bad, but I don't love it as much as I used to. And I think these words alone are enough to put Butterfly Effect in the average house. Episode 11b, The Greenhouse. In an effort to be more energy efficient, Lincoln rallies his family to stop using so much electricity. I know a perfect way to start off this review, by immediately putting this episode in the garbage house. I fucking hate this episode so much. This is one of the absolute worst episodes of the show that I have ever seen. I don't even know where to begin with this piece of shit. Every time I watch this episode, I find about 10 more problems with it that piss me off even more. Nothing in this episode is good. NOTHING. And it's further evident because there is nothing in the highlight box. I'm not even joking. Not a single thing in this episode is good. The comedy is non-existent, all the characters are at their absolute worst, the plot is so jumbled that halfway through the episode it seems the writers forgot to add some kind of moral so that Lincoln learns a lesson, and what we end up with is getting a half baked moral that feels shoehorned into the story for no reason! I've never seen an episode about teaching kids to be more friendly with the environment as horrible as this. Even SpongeBob did this job better in its seventh season. The episode is set up as Lincoln being forced to have his house go more equal friendly in order to not be labeled as an outcast and save the polar bears. But it's not all Lincoln's fault, since he's been doing his part, but the sisters haven't. Here's one of my major problems with this episode. It expects me to believe that the sisters were never in the wrong for wasting electricity, and deserve to be angry at Lincoln in the end. They don't even appreciate the fact that he peddles their power and ends up still being an outcast at school, when really it was their own fault to begin with. When Lincoln tries to convince his sisters to be more eco-friendly, they instantly reject the idea and are annoyed at him, forcing Lincoln to be the bad guy in this situation by using a picture of a polar bear to mess with their emotions. Even then, they're still mad at him when it was originally their fault to begin with. So honestly, I don't quite blame Lincoln in this scenario, since everyone else forced him to become the bad guy in this scenario. Even more frustrating is that the episode also seems to expect Lincoln and the viewer to learn a lesson about how he didn't do his part, even despite how he was doing everything in the house to save energy, enough for him to use some of his power in the house to play an online game tournament. But then, all of a sudden, these two random boys show up who I don't even know, I guess they're supposed to be Lincoln's friends, maybe? And they wanted to play the tournament at his house since their houses are also trying to be green as well. You know what? If you guys wanted to play the tournament, why didn't you just do it at a more public place like a library or something? But nope, the boys were basically like, screw it, let's just play the game at Lincoln's house since he's already going to fail anyways and become an outcast. And because of them, it forces Lincoln to go even more extreme and shove down the message of Lincoln being a hypocrite, when really, those two boys were the reason why Lincoln had to make his sisters miserable, and they get no punishment whatsoever. Are you kidding me?! All Lincoln had to do was kick out the boys and he would still be able to play his game and keep his house in the green. But no, the writers decided not to do that and instead gave us some moral at the last second for no reason other than it's a save the planet episode. But now the bigger question comes with whether or not Lincoln is a hypocrite for not doing his part in keeping his house green. And honestly, the answer is no. At the beginning, Lincoln wanted to keep his house in the green, which was originally his plan. He is only being labeled as a hypocrite because everyone else around him is making a situation so much more difficult for him to pull off. The episode is convincing me that you, the viewer, should do your part to save the Earth based off Lincoln's situation getting more and more difficult when he did want to keep his house eco-friendly. I'm sorry, but how am I supposed to buy into this? This is not a good lesson to teach kids. It's just 
awful at doing everything. And then of course, by the end of the episode, Lincoln ends up peddling the power and the sisters go right back to what they were doing before. Yup. The sisters didn't learn anything at all, which makes them look even worse than they already do. I'm sorry that I'm getting really angry, but this is just a terrible episode that I can't believe even exists. I can't believe Nickelodeon actually let this episode air. This is one of the most disgusting episodes I have ever seen from The Loud House. It just gets everything wrong and is completely misguided with its message it was trying to deliver, along with its characters, writing, and anything that could be funny. Not only only does this episode deserve to be in the garbage house, as I labeled before, but I think it truly does need to go into the garbage. I'll be amazed if they actually made an episode that's even worse than this one. Episode 11A, Along Came His Sister. When Lincoln brings home his class's pet tarantula, he tries to hide it from Lenny. Damn it, I really wanted to like this episode, guys, because I know a lot of people really do, but I think the most I can describe about this episode is awkward. First half just consists of a lot of moments that are either weird or just really awkward. Probably the most cringeworthy moment in this episode came from a moment where Lincoln looks underneath the bathroom door while Lori is in there and he tries to make up some excuse for doing it. That moment was just downright creepy. And I know Lincoln was looking for the spider, but Lori's reaction just sent chills down my spine for all the wrong reasons. But even with those awkward moments out of the way, the first half of this episode wasn't really that funny. We get a funeral gag with Lucy that honestly went a bit too long for me. I think the Loud House just shouldn't have awkward humor like this, it just doesn't work. Thankfully, this episode manages to redeem itself in the second half. The siblings all team up to stop the exterminator from killing the spider. I really liked how all the siblings work together and to put their differences aside over some issue, because they want to accomplish the same thing. But of course, I think the best thing about this episode is just Lenny. She is just incredible in this episode. Not only does she have the funniest lines, but the episode also highlights how big of a heart she has when it comes to her family, with proof of that coming from when she saves the spider and conquers her fear of spiders just so Lincoln can make sure the spider is safe. I really like this coming from Lenny and it fits with her character, especially since she does this to redeem herself after nearly killing the spider before. So on the whole, I certainly don't think Along Came His Sister is a bad episode, but I just don't like it as much as everyone else does. So I'm gonna put it in the average house. Episode 12B, Chore in Peace. Lincoln wants to trade his chores with his sisters. Once again, we get an episode where all the sisters band together to stop Lincoln while he's all alone. It didn't work in episodes before, and of course, it doesn't work here. Though to be fair, it is a scenario that does make more sense, and I can relate to everyone getting a chore and one person not enjoying it. But my big issue comes with why Lincoln can't switch his job with someone else's. Lori explains that if one person switches a position, it messes up the whole flow. But the episode never gives us evidence to back up that statement, or show us what could possibly happen if Lincoln switched with, say, Luann or Lucy's chore. Oh, and the big the biggest reason as to why the siblings all band together to try and fix their issue is just because of Lily. I think having Lily as being a reason as to why the siblings should stop doing what they're doing is just lazy. The siblings need to realize what they're doing is wrong by themselves. They do not need the youngest sibling to help them realize what they're doing is wrong. Otherwise, there were some parts I liked in this episode. I liked the scene where Lola was covered up in garbage trying to look cute for the television reporter, and the situation getting worse and worse. It was a pretty amusing moment. So, this episode probably gets the average house. Episode 13A for Bros About to Rock. Luna attempts to make Lincoln's first concert his most memorable one yet. This episode has widely been regarded as one of the best episodes in the whole show. And you know what? I'm right there with everyone. I love this episode so much. I'm just gonna cut to the chase and put this episode in the glory house. Now it's time to talk about my reasons why. My biggest positive is obvious. I love Luna in this episode. She tries to add a lot of fun to an already great premise, and even despite how her attempts to help 
Lincoln and Clyde could just be seen as making things worse. Deep down, you can see that Luna isn't trying to harm anyone, but just trying to make sure everyone has a great time. Sure, this may seem similar to Lynn when she plays roughly with Lincoln, but the difference comes in that Lincoln never gets it in her head that Lincoln doesn't enjoy it and is actually getting hurt by her. While for Luna, when she's told that her way is helping Lincoln with his first concerts are actually embarrassing, she actually understands it and realizes her mistakes. This just makes Luna a much more likable character, since her intentions to make things better while not always effective still feel genuine, and even after she got scolded by Lincoln for her behavior, she still attempts to rescue him when he's arrested later in the second half of the episode. But the part that made me adore this episode so much was for the second half. For the first time, we actually get a backstory into one of the sisters, with this one being about Luna. And honestly, I can see Luna and Lincoln having a lot of similarities after seeing her backstory. While she's the loudest sibling in the family, which contrasts to Lincoln always wanting peace and quiet, she was also someone who was like Lincoln around his age, someone who was confused and didn't know what their passion was in life. And after Luna attended her first rock concert, she finally figured out what her true calling in life was. What really does make the whole thing of Luna tagging along to her other sister's concerts make so much more sense in context of her character. She wants her siblings to enjoy their first concert the same way she did, making it something truly special. It wasn't until Lincoln got it in her head what the actual effects were when she did attend those concerts with her sisters. But for Lincoln, it's the rare exception since her wild behavior fits perfectly with Lincoln and Clyde going to a rock concert. Even when Luna promises to be on her best behavior for Lincoln's concert, he then realizes that for his first rock concert, it wouldn't be as fun without help from Luna. And thanks to her, his concert was even more fun than he imagined before. I found this to be a great bonding moment between Lincoln and Luna, and it's a shame that after this episode, we haven't seen the two bond much afterwards. Which really is a shame, considering how this episode shows us that these two have potential to have one of the best relationships between the siblings in the entire series. For Bros About to Rock is just one of the best episodes in the entire series, and it made me love Luna so much more as a character. That showed off Lincoln and Luna bonding with plenty of personality and chemistry between the two, only supporting my reasons for why these two would make such a great pairing. I don't know if the writers are watching this, but please writers, please give us another Lincoln and Luna episode Everyone in the fandom is demanding it. I really want another one. If you do that, you guys are amazing. Episode 13B. It's a loud, 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 loud house. That's a long name. I'm just gonna call it It's a Four Times Loud House. Lincoln thinks Cash is hidden in the house after he reads a letter he found in the attic. Oh, what a surprise! Another episode that's widely hated by a lot of people. And I think I'm definitely going to be in the majority that this episode is one of the most unpleasant episodes I've ever sat through in the entire series. Everyone in this episode is out of character, acting much like mini versions of Lori or Lola all for the sake of money, even if it's a quarter. I get why some people may like this episode. It's a cartoon, it's supposed to be exaggerated, and it's supposed to tell you this moral of how money can ruin people around you, but there's some major issues when it comes to this idea. Firstly, some of the sisters actually have part-time jobs and could make money on their own, whether it's Luann's clown business, or Lori's job at the arcade, or even Luna making some money performing for tips. Why would they have to worry about money when they could easily make some on their own? In total, the sisters just act like absolute jerks in this episode. True, Lincoln wasn't that likable in this episode, but at least he was the only one who was trying to convince the the other sisters what they were doing were wrong, but no, they're the problems for everything in this episode. After they all fight Lincoln for a quarter, which is just as stupid as them fighting over a spot in the car, they all have to go upstairs and clean the attic. Then they all blame Lincoln for causing them to clean the attic up, even though it was their fault for doing it, and then of course the money chaos ensues. All the characters just act so unlikable in this episode. They keep breaking things or hurting others, and they feel 
feel no remorse for what they've done. There's one particular scene in this episode where Lincoln keeps going into each of his sister's rooms to remind them of Sharon de Monet, which involves a particularly awful scene where the writer thought it was a good idea to turn Luna into a complete jerk who kicks Lincoln out brutally with her speakers. This is just a bad example of out of character moment, especially since this episode came out right after For Bros About to Rock. It's even its sister episode. Later on, it's true that the siblings do end up working together to actually find the money, but it doesn't really work that well because the siblings, even though they showed some kind of remorse, it's not enough to make up for what they did. And then of course, the episode ends with them earning money as a reward, despite what they've done, including trashing the house. The siblings do not deserve reward. They deserve punishment. All of them. Because like I said, they don't truly feel terrible for what they've done. They've seemed to learn very little in this scenario. Like I said, this is just an unpleasant episode that perfectly fits into the house. Episode 14A, Toads and Tiaras, where Lola gets injured and cannot compete in the pageant, Lincoln trains Lana to take her place. Well, here's a shocker, an episode that only has two sisters. I don't think we've had that in an episode like that before. Throughout the episode, Lana is trying so hard to be just like Lola or the other girls, and she finds this really difficult. But Lincoln realizes that it would suit her more to be herself, even if it costs him Dairyland tickets. I love the bonding between Lincoln and Lana while they were training for the pageant, and the fact that Lincoln wants Lana to be herself to make her happy was all just so adorable. I also really like the part where Lola congratulates Lana for winning. It really shows that even though the two fight a lot, they still really love each other despite all of their arguments. For an episode that shows you that it's okay to be yourself, this episode delivered that moral much better than Picture Perfect. There's not really much else for me to say about Toes and Tiaras. I just really like this episode so much. I'm definitely putting it in the glory house, and it's an episode I'll certainly be rewatching in the future. Episode 14B, Two Boys and a Baby. Lincoln and Clyde take up the task of babysitting Lily while Lincoln's family is away visiting Aunt Ruth. This episode is really annoying, and it has a similar problem as making the case. It's an episode with a potentially good idea, but it's completely wasted for a bland story. This episode had a potentially good story, with Lincoln not only taking care of Lily, but also spending time with her and developing their relationship. This could have been good, but it doesn't exactly happen like that. Lincoln is only taking care of Lily to avoid going to Aunt Ruth like everyone else. The problem with this is the framing, because how Lincoln acts throughout the first five minutes is completely misleading. His attitude is so smug and disgusting, acting like it's a luxury to stay home and take care of Lily as he finds it a better option. But the big problem with this episode is the fact that Lincoln isn't actually doing a good job taking care of Lily, even though it's been shown plenty of times in the previous episodes that Lincoln was perfectly fine taking care of Lily before. I feel like the writer only did this just so Lincoln can get punished to get a taste of his own medicine, which I don't buy into because this episode expects me to believe that Lincoln has never taken care of Lily before. And if that wasn't enough, Lincoln is still punished in the end and has to go stay with Aunt Ruth since the writer shoehorned in a random chicken pox incident that doesn't fit at all with this episode. And it seems like all of this was only here so that Lincoln is properly punished for acting smug towards everyone else and taking the easy way out, which again, I don't believe this at all. Also, what was the point of Clyde being in this episode? Was it just so they could have him be punished as well, despite Clyde really doing nothing in the episode? Also, he doesn't do much to affect the story other than just to be there with Lincoln. The humor just mostly consists of gross out because hey, it's Lily after all. And once again, we get very little of Lincoln. Lincoln and Lily actually spending time together. Again, just like making the case, this episode wastes a potentially good story only to cop out and deliver a poorly framed story and a collection of toilet jokes that honestly make me cringe. And on that note, this episode goes into the house. And it's fitting because this episode is mostly filled with toilet humor. It 
pretty much fits. Episode 15A, Cover Girls. When all ten of Lincoln's sisters are asking to cover for them on the same day, Lincoln has his hands full. So the setup to this episode is pretty simple. Lincoln has to impersonate all ten of his sisters when they have plans during their family cleanup day. When things seem to be according to plan, it takes a turn for the worst when Pop Pop video calls them, forcing all the sisters to return home as they all end up impersonating each other in the episode's second half. I really enjoy the unpredictability of this episode, especially when each sibling was doing an impersonation of each other and nailing it really well. I found this to be the funniest episode of season one by far. So many moments stand out in such a great way, from Lincoln playing both Lola and Lana at the same time, to Lenny mistaking her thumb as a pinky, to Lenny running into Luann who's dressed up as Lenny, and the interaction that they have with each other, including that little dance-off, had me laughing. By the time the siblings finish video chatting with Pop Pop, the parents find out that they've been lying all day to both them and Pop Pop and getting out of doing the work. I have heard some people complain about the ending, how the siblings are unfairly punished by going back to their plans dressed the way they were. I actually thought it was justified, since they did in fact lie to them to get out of doing their own things they had planned. It's also worth bringing up the beginning of the episode, where the sisters are covering for Lincoln when he's past his curfew and trying to get home. This part has a nice element of suspense, and felt very fun seeing all the sisters cover for Lincoln since he ends up doing the same thing for them the very next day. There's just so much to love about Cover Girls, and it's easily going into the glory house. It keeps things fresh, it has solid twists, and it has a lot of great comedy. Episode 15B, Save the Date. After a hurtful misunderstanding, Lincoln and Lori go on a double date with Bobby and his little sister, Ronnie Ann. I mentioned before in my review of Heavy Metal that I did like how that episode started the relationship between Lincoln and Ronnie Ann, and it progresses throughout this episode. It still maintains its freshness. It still manages to be an enjoyable relationship, and seeing the two together is really cute. I also really like the moral of this episode about how words can really hurt someone, and Lincoln realizes this at the end. Plus, the ending was cute and satisfying to see everything go on. Unfortunately, I don't really like this episode as much as everyone else does. The reason everyone loves it is obvious, because it started Lincoln's relationship with Ronnie Ann. But in my case, there is a lot of issues with this episode. For starters, Lori was terrible from beginning to end, acting like a total baby over something Lincoln had no idea he even did to her. All because he said some nasty things to Ronnie Ann, even if he wasn't aware of her presence. That now means that Lori wants to physically hurt Lincoln and force him to suck up to Ronnie Ann and apologize, not because Lori feels bad for Ronnie Ann, but just so she can get back together with Bobby. You seriously care more for your boyfriend over your freaking brother? Are you serious? And somehow the episode is supposed to make us feel sorry for Lori and feel scorn for Lincoln, which I don't buy at all considering how Lori was acting. But even then, she's not the worst character in this episode. That comes with Clyde. I couldn't stand Clyde in this episode. He was supposed to help Lincoln, and yet spent the majority of this episode sabotaging the date by being a total jerk to Bobby and trying to impress Lori, as this episode proves once again that Clyde should never do comedy. Because all the comedy Clyde tries to do in this episode is not funny. But my biggest issue with Clyde, however, what does he have against Bobby? What has Bobby ever done to Clyde? And no, the whole, oh, he's dating Lori thing doesn't count. But the biggest issue, aside from Clyde, Lori, and the general unpleasant feeling of this episode, is that everything is happening all out of convenience. From Ronnie Ann hearing Lincoln say those mean things about her, twice by the way, to Bobby being Ronnie Ann's older brother causing Lori to be dumped by him, to Lincoln's friends showing up on the date, you might as well call this Butterfly Effect Part 2, since everything happening is almost through a chain of events caused by Lincoln. Overall, this episode has good qualities and some bad qualities, which I think is enough to put this episode in the average house. I get that a lot of people like it, but I am honestly not that crazy about it. Episode 16, a Attention Deficit. 
I apologize if I couldn't pronounce that right. Lincoln hangs at Clyde's home because he likes Clyde's dads, who give Lincoln lots of attention. A really silly and enjoyable story where all Lincoln wants is some attention and he gets some from Clyde's dads, but his sisters soon intervene. Now, this could have gone really bad with a plot like this, but thankfully Lincoln ends up achieving what he wanted at the end, and the sisters finally get in their heads that it's not all about them when the parents help Lincoln for his volcano for school. This is also an episode that doesn't have a clear message or moral, and I'm completely okay with it. I also enjoyed seeing Clyde's dads here. Their reactions to finally dropping off the sisters back home was very amusing. It was so much for them to handle, they couldn't even remember all their names. While I found Clyde's dads amusing for me personally, I found Luna to be the funniest character in this episode. Whether it was zipping her mouth and throwing the key out the window like a mime, or how she accidentally told everyone by singing in the shower. I mean, it's way better than Lynn trying to be funny by hurting Link or through fart jokes. It's a little hard to explain why I like this episode, but I just found it enjoyable all throughout. I like the central story, the second half leads to some amusing comedy, and I really like the ending where Lincoln finally accomplishes what we wanted at the beginning without being demeaned by his sisters for no reason. This episode goes into the glory house. It's pretty good, and I'll definitely rewatch this episode many times in the future. Episode 16b, Out on a Limo. Lincoln wins a limo ride, and the experience changes him. This is a bit of a weird one. This is another episode that a lot of people seem to hate, but I honestly don't think it's that terrible. True, it's not a good episode, but it's not as bad as people say it is. Now, at the very least, I do get why people hate this episode. Lincoln is a complete jerk throughout most of this episode, but at least the episode properly punishes him for his arrogance, and Lincoln learns a valuable lesson in all of this, which I think all this episode was trying to do was teach the viewers not to treat others like garbage when you get a taste of the rich life. And for that, I give props to Alex Schwimmer, the writer of this episode, for pulling it off really well. The other reason people hate this episode is because of the character Tetherby. And honestly, I don't hate this character. I don't like this character, but I can't muster any hate for this guy because it's clear he's the antagonist of this story, and he's only in the story so Lincoln can learn the message this episode has. He's arrogant, snobby, and smug as hell, but come on, cartoons have portrayed rich folks like this before for decades. It's something to expect. And unlike the inconsiderate and often annoying Lynn, Tetherby is only in this episode, and he at least gets something of a punishment. Otherwise, this episode isn't anything amazing. The story is predictable, but its moral is well executed. But one thing I wanted to bring up that a lot of people actually have was when Lincoln was in the trash cans outside of Tetherby's with the news reporter filming him, the sisters could have at least seen Lincoln on the news and realized that he's learned his lesson and suffered enough. I think if that scene was in the episode, it could have made the ending a lot better. But as it stands, this episode goes into the average house. I understand if you guys hate it, but I don't think it's that bad. I think it's just okay. Episode 17a, House Music. The kids enter a talent show and Luna suggests they form a band. To Kevin Sullivan, the person who wrote this episode, he did an incredible job. This episode is already being put in the glory house. Not only does this episode does an incredible job of showcasing showcasing Luna as not only a passionate, fun, creative member of the family, but also showcases Luna as a flawed character who lets her goals and desires get in the way of not only her family, but also herself. When she loses her creative focus on making music all because of her lifetime goal of impressing her idol Mick Swagger, it shines a light on Luna's flaws as a character whenever this happens. She acts rude to her siblings, focuses too much on making a perfect sound instead of a sound she wants, and she forgets gets the whole reason why she wanted to make music in the first place. Luna made music because it was something she loved to do, and was passionate about it. When she realizes that thanks to a random stranger at the diner, obviously not Mick Swagger, it feels fitting for her character and the story itself. Even though I loved Luna in For Bros About to Rock, this episode defines her as one of the best characters in the whole show. Sure, she does act like a jerk to her siblings, and to Lynn Sr., but it all makes sense in the context of the episode. 
She's under a lot of stress to impress her idol, and for anyone who has a passion for making their craft and showing it off to the world, I can relate to this episode. Once Luna realizes her mistakes and apologizes to her siblings, it feels sincere, and you can tell for her character that she truly is sorry. And the siblings are aware enough to know what Luna did was wrong, and that she does still love them, only she was under the pressure of making music for someone to love instead of making music she loves. But aside from the incredible portrayal of Luna, everything else about this episode is amazing. The comedic moments from some of the siblings were great, Lin Sr. was a nice addition to the episode and added some great comic relief as well, and the ending was the perfect way to conclude this story. In the end, I understand there's people that don't like this episode because of how Luna was portrayed, but I actually find it to be a good thing in this episode, and it's what made me love Luna so much as a character. If for bros about to rock and house music prove anything, it's that Luna Loud truly is an incredible sister to hang around. Episode 17b, A Novel Idea. While Lin Sr. takes the girls to his workplace, Rita offers to take Lincoln to her dental office. I have heard that a lot of people kind of forget about this episode, which is kind of a shame because I thought this episode was solid. Lincoln goes to Rita's work for the day and tries to do anything to keep himself engaged during the day. I can relate to what Lincoln goes through in this episode since I know that feeling of complete boredom and how I would mess around with my surroundings just to occupy myself. While not overly hilarious, I do find it amusing. The second half is probably the most entertaining part of this episode, as Lincoln is trying to retrieve his mum's novel that she's working on that he lost since he left to go to the arcade. The chase scene was very fun and fast-paced, and I like how in the end Rita realizes that she never liked the original idea she had, and almost seems to thank Lincoln for giving her a fresh new idea to write about. While I wish Lincoln and Rita did some more bonding together, I'm not complaining about how they're shown. The sisters are also in this episode, but only for brief moments as they're at Lynn Sr.'s office having some fun. Their scenes are okay, but nothing all that memorable. In all honesty, this episode probably would have gone into the average house, but honestly, I thought this was an enjoyable ride that I think it can just get by and enter into the glory house. It's a solid episode, but it's nothing that amazing. Episode 18A, April Fool's Rules. Every April Fool's Day, Luann pranks the entire household, but this year, Lincoln has a plan to not get pranked. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This episode almost made me hate Luann as a character in the show. Her character is so horribly written in this episode, I almost forgot about all the reasons why I like her. Luann has always been at her best when she's played up for being more dorky and down to earth with her comedy. Her gags for the most part are innocent and not taken seriously, she's never had an intent to hurt anyone. But this episode throws all that out the window by making it her goal to not only deeply embarrass her family, but hurt them physically without feeling any remorse other than delivering a bad pun to try and ease the moment. But really, all you do is just make things worse than they already are. Lincoln goes through so much torture at the hands of Luann that it disgusts me that she doesn't feel bad for hurting her brother, especially with all the physical abuse he goes through. You want to do this kind of episode right? Do what Spongebob did with Fools in April back in Season 1. In that episode, Spongebob was making jokes and pranks that were all innocent and not meant to hurt anyone. But since Squidward got annoyed from all the pranks, he decided to pull one on Spongebob that ends up deeply embarrassing him in public and making him upset for how cruel the prank was. So Squidward feels bad in the end and tries to apologize since it was clear that his prank went over the line. This is how you do it, Loud House. Make an episode where a prank leads to someone hurt physically or emotionally, or both, and the person who pulled the prank must realize how much it actually hurts. In fact, one of the users on the Loud House wiki, Animation Fan 15, actually wrote a fanfic that portrays this. The link will be in the description, be sure to go check it out. But April Fool's Rules doesn't do any of this, because they believe that taking Luann's pranks up to the level of jackass stunts is the best thing for this episode, or the funniest thing to provide. In fact, the funniest thing about this episode didn't even come from Luann, but it came from Lenny, when she mistakes drawing straws for actual drawing straws on a piece of paper. This was actually a funny moment, and the only funny moment in this episode. When a Luann-centered episode can't get the jokes right for Luann and one of the side characters ends up being funnier than Luann? You know you fucked up. This episode is going into the controls. 
At the very least, Lincoln is actually rewarded for doing the right thing. Roddy Ann comes over and appreciates what Lincoln did, even giving Luann some punishment with a pie to the face. Except this doesn't really work, since Luann actually still doesn't learn her lesson and just says, That girl's a keeper. To all the Luann fans who haven't watched this episode yet, Please don't. It's not worth it. It'll only make you despise Luann. Kind of like how Luna fans were sickened by what she did in It's a Four Times Loud House. Episode 18b, Serial Offender. Lincoln tries to go grocery shopping for his mother, but his sisters tag along and start to misbehave. This episode has a somewhat polarizing reception from the fans, and it's not hard to see why. As far as positives go, I enjoyed the fast pace of this episode. It never felt like there was a moment that was slow or boring and I do like how Lincoln actually does get rewarded for being wrongfully punished since he did deserve the serial he wanted after all the hard work he had to go through. I also really liked the chase scene that Lincoln had with the bratty kid. It offers some excitement and conflict for the episode that overall fits. However, there is one major issue with this episode. All the sisters were not needed. I don't see how the sisters could be so excited to visit a grocery store, which is something I don't find myself to get all that excited about. All they did was cause trouble, and once again, the sisters aren't aware that the actions they're doing have real consequences. What they're doing will get them banned from the grocery store and don't even realize it, making me actually feel sorry for the manager since all he's trying to do is keep any trouble or reckless behavior out of his establishment. Yup. It's just like heavy metal and no guts, no glory combined together. Really, the sisters are the true antagonists in this episode, since all they do is cause trouble and then get angry at Lincoln when he wants to get a cereal at the end and argue about how they want something too. Honestly, after what the sisters did, they don't deserve a treat, they deserve punishment. It's also a shame seeing Luna being the one who takes the cereal out of Lincoln's hand and acting like a schoolyard bully towards him. Why do the writers have trouble writing Luna how she's supposed to be. Thankfully, the sisters do redeem themselves by getting Link in his cereal and apologizing, which does save this episode a little bit for me, and it was very close to making the garbage house, but honestly, I think I'm just gonna barely pop this episode into the average house. I did find some enjoyment, but oh lord, the sisters were so annoying in this episode. Episode 19A, Lincoln Loud, Girl Guru. Lincoln and Clyde must start a business for a school project, and they need Lincoln's sister's expertise. I honestly don't really have that much to say about this episode, because everything bad about it was already pointed out by a lot of people. Lincoln is way over his head, believing that living with ten sisters will give the boys at school great advice on girls. The idea for this episode actually made me cringe. Not only is it painfully predictable, but it gives me an uneasy feeling every time I watch the first half of this episode building itself up for its second half, since I already know what will happen, and I'm not looking forward to witnessing it. To be fair, Lincoln is properly punished for giving out embarrassing advice to everyone, but just like Intense Debate, the ending has Lincoln suffering too much for his actions. Only difference is that in this episode it's more justified and makes more sense, but just barely. Also, this episode doesn't really have much comedy in there. The only visible joke is that all the sisters love to eat chocolate. But was it really necessary to put an unfunny stereotypical trait that all the girls are in love with eating chocolate? It just feels so overdone. Also, the sisters have a particularly unfunny scene towards the end of the episode. When Lincoln tells his sisters what he's been going through, instead of trying to help him, the sisters just laugh at Lincoln. And this drags on for 20 seconds. It's not funny and it comes across as really annoying. And oh lord, this is giving me bad flashbacks of Sleuther consequences. In total, this episode is just really annoying. Not the worst of its kind, but an episode that definitely has to go into the girls. Episode 19B, Come Sail Away. It's time for the Loud family's annual garage sale, and every Loud kid is determined to outsell the others. Once again, we get another episode where the siblings learn their lesson not because it was wrong, but just because they did it for Lily. All because they sold her blanket by accident. Seriously, the writers need to stop using this type of plot. It's just lazy. As for positives of this episode, I did like some of the dialogue, especially from Lenny when she attempts to trash talk Lana 
doormat, or mistakes a doormat for Lily's blanket. That was kind of funny. And the pacing of this episode at least kept me engaged. But aside from my biggest issue, which I just mentioned before, there's also this painfully unfunny sequence of all the siblings twerking in the living room. It's just... Ugh, it's so cringeworthy. And it's even implied that the only reason they want to win is just so they can twerk and show off their butts. No. It's not a terrible episode, but I think it's far from good. I'm just gonna put it in the average house and move on. Episode 20A, Roughing It. Lincoln goes camping with Clyde to reacquaint it with his masculine side. In general, there is a lot of things I like about this episode. I like how Lincoln never feels overly punished for thinking he needs to be super masculine. He gets chased by bears and is in a rapid river, but compared to being punished and demeaned by everyone for no reason at all, like in Swither Consequences, or tortured at the hands of Luann, like in April Fool's Rules, this isn't anything too harsh. And I like how Lincoln learns that when he spent time with his sisters, he did pick up on things that are actually useful, and it's funny how they would be useful when you're lost in the woods. He learns to value his time spent with his sisters and not let gender get in the way of how he feels about himself. And it's a lesson that works. Clyde is also in here, and he doesn't do too much to stand out as he usually does, but he is very helpful to Lincoln, and he doesn't do anything overly annoying. I found this episode entertaining throughout. I like Lincoln and how the sisters were utilized in this story, I really enjoyed the moral of the episode, and it all comes together as something really enjoyable. It goes in the glory house. I dug this quite a bit, and I really recommend this episode. Episode 20B, The Waiting Game. Lori gets a job at a pizza arcade thanks to Lincoln, who gets her in trouble by asking her favors. I have serious issues with this episode, and I was actually really close to calling it one of the bad episodes. However, this is also one of those episodes where the positives stand out in a good way, and I had to draw the line and give this episode prompt for working just well enough. Let's start off with the negatives. For starters, the plot of this episode is all about Lincoln and Clyde hoping to get invited to Chandler's birthday party that is so epic that it takes place at a sewage plant. Look, I get that Lincoln and Clyde are boys and they're 11, but even when I was their age, I would easily get bored at the idea of going at a birthday party at a sewage plant. I would honestly find it really gross. So now the two have to try and act cool for Chandler, as Lincoln comes up with the idea to convince Chandler to invite them to his birthday party by giving him free stuff from Lori's job. I'm not really a fan of this setup, because it makes Lincoln come across as quite unlikable in this episode. He manipulates Lori by sweet-talking her, which felt kind of funny at first, but it was repeated and it came across as really annoying and facepalm-worthy. Lori had every right to be annoyed with Lincoln, since she did nothing wrong and was actually grateful for Lincoln since he helped her get the job in the first place. Place. And for as much as people can't stand Tetherby and out a limo, I find Chandler so much worse. This kid is someone who thinks he's super popular and cool only because he has cool things and goes to places people want to go. And he seems aware of this since people actually want to hang out with him, so he's going to manipulate people like Lincoln so he can get free stuff and just enjoy it all even if he's not aware of the possible consequences. I really couldn't stand Chandler in this episode. He was so annoying and snobbish acting like he is awesome only because he has things people want so badly. So he's going to use that advantage just so he can get free stuff without care in the world. Even worse is how he doesn't suffer any consequences for his actions of almost getting Lori fired and using Lincoln in such a terrible way. Why do kids think he's so cool again? Alright, oh, because jerks like Chandler have stuff that kids find awesome. The whole episode felt very cringeworthy as Lincoln manipulates Lori, tries so hard to impress Chandler, and we have to deal with with Lincoln and Clyde getting overly excited for a birthday party at a sewage plant, which doesn't even sound that fun at all. So now you're probably wondering, why don't I place this in the garbage house? Well, that comes with the third act. Lincoln is about to leave for the birthday party when he finds Lori getting dressed to go to her job. Lincoln wonders why she isn't getting ready for her school dance, as she explains that she has to work overtime in order to pay all the free stuff she gave to Lincoln. He sees that she's upset over this and finally realizes that it's all his fault since Lori worked so hard to earn enough money for the dress she wanted for the dance she wanted to go to. So Lincoln takes over for Lori at her job while she goes to her dance. 
Lori comes back and is very grateful for Lincoln doing this as the two share a sweet hug that comes off as very sincere. The one thing this episode has going for that really helps is Lori, as she, for once, actually acts like just a normal, kind teenage girl and not her usual high bitch and control attitude like she usually is in most other episodes. I really hope Lori acts more like this in future episodes coming up. I easily prefer Lori acting like this. When she is annoyed with Lincoln, it makes sense since she knows Lincoln is using her job as a way to get free stuff for someone. And the fact that she's thankful for what Lincoln did so she can go to her dance and their hug at the end easily makes it one of the best moments of season one. So the positives were slightly enough to outweigh the negatives, but when you really put in the negatives as well, I think it's fair to only put this episode in the average house. Could have gone in the glory, could have gone in the garbage, but I think just in the middle is good enough. Episode 21A, The Loudest Yard. When Mom slams Lincoln up for a peewee football game, he schemes to have Lynn take his spot. I'm once again going to piss off a lot of Lynn fans, but I'm gonna come out and say it, I don't like this episode very much. Granted, it's not bad per se, but there are so many issues here. For starters, I find the reason for Lincoln playing football to be kind of stupid. Yes, kids need exercise, but we have something in schools called PE. Not to mention, forcing kids to play sports would seem more appropriate when they're like 8 or 9, when they need to find hobbies that could possibly be good at. Not when they're almost in middle school. But whatever, we needed something to get the plot set up. Even though fans do say that Lynn was actually being nice to Lincoln and helping him practice for football, I have reasons to back up why Lynn wasn't exactly being a sweetheart. While Lynn had good intentions to train Lincoln, she should have realized that her training methods weren't exactly effective since Lincoln kept falling over. But the episode never does that since in the second half, Lynn decides to take Lincoln's place for the games. Again, many fans will argue that she was being thoughtful and kind-hearted for doing this until you realize in the episode that Lynn was doing this less because she loves Lincoln and his family and more because she wants to show how awesome she is at football and rub it in Lincoln's face. And in the end, Lincoln ends up playing and is chased by his team for losing the game after scoring the final point for the other team. So at least Lincoln got what he deserved for lying to everyone. Still, the lesson in this episode doesn't feel earned as it seems more like Lincoln is forced to learn this moral and doesn't take anything away from his actions. In the end, I'm just gonna throw it in the average house. Yes, there were things I didn't like about it, but I don't think there was anything that was super, super annoying about it. Yes, the moral isn't exactly that good, but everything else in this episode I can just let it slide. Episode 21b, Raw Deal. Lincoln becomes a hypochondriac when Lucy predicts his day will end in disaster. Which actually means Lincoln's scared he's gonna die. Ugh, look, Raw Deal had good intentions, but it is just such an unpleasant and unenjoyable episode. The one joke that they constantly repeat throughout the entire episode is that Lincoln is scared that he's gonna die. I really don't see this as comedy, because Lincoln being scared throughout the entire 11 minutes of possibly dying, it's a joke that wasn't funny to begin with, and the fact that they repeat this as their only joke for the rest of the episode just left me cringing. I don't care if Lincoln Lincoln's reactions were so over-the-top and superly detailed, I'm still taking in the fact that Lincoln's scared he's going to die. But what really angers me about this episode is that no one seems to care about Lincoln. All they say to him is, oh, it's just a stupid fortune, get over it. How can the sisters say something like this when their fortunes came true throughout the episode? And true, their fortunes were creative, and some of them I did think were actually kind of cool. We're still taking in the fact that the sisters just don't seem to give a shit about what's happening to Lincoln. Lisa is pretty much the only sister who kind of cares for Lincoln's safety, but once her fortune comes true, she just says to Lincoln, I'll see you later, Lincoln, or maybe not. Now, as for Lucy, I will say it's not entirely Lucy's fault. All she did was read Lincoln his fortune, which he wanted, but considering that she was aware of this and does nothing to help Lincoln, shows that she has the similar problem as everyone else. She doesn't care. All she does is rub in the fact that the cards never lie. And I know some people defend the fact that Lincoln did have a good day because he saw the geyser go off. This ending is completely bullshit. 
How could Lincoln say that it was the best day ever just because he saw the geyser go off? As Andrew once said in the Talking Loud video, that's like going to see a really bad movie. You hated the movie, but you still said it was the best movie ever because you enjoyed the previews. Raw Deal doesn't anger me as much as other bad episodes, but it certainly annoys me in a way that it really wasn't trying to. This episode is going into the ghost. I don't care if people like this episode, that's not going to change the fact that I absolutely hate this episode. Episode 22A, Dance, Dance, Resolution. It's the Sadie Hawkins Dance at School and Luna, Luann, Lynn, and Lucy have landed Lincoln for dates. Because they thought Ronnie Ann wasn't actually going to take him. In general, this is a solid episode. No one really comes across as unlikable in this episode. Lincoln is forced to go to the dance because his sisters felt sorry that Ronnie Ann didn't ask him and got him four girls to go with with him, but it feels justified since Lincoln did lie to his sisters, so it's clearly his fault. I like how he tried to juggle going with four different girls, and the overall energy of this episode keeps things engaging and enjoyable from start to finish. And despite how I don't really like Clyde, I will admit he was useful in this episode helping Lincoln and not being used for comedy. I also liked how the four girls still have a good time when they ended up hanging out with Lincoln's friends, and that Lincoln managed to have a happy ending since Ronnie Ann reveals that she didn't want to go to the dance, but was asking Lincoln to go to Gus's for an arcade special. Lincoln and Ronnie Ann end up having a good time at Gus's Game and Grub, and everyone in the end gets what they want without making anyone a jerk or tortured by other characters. This episode is gonna go into the glory house. I really enjoyed this episode. It's one of the most light-hearted episodes the show has ever created, and in many of the episodes' case, that's actually a bit of a surprise. Episode 22B, A Fair to Remember. When Lincoln and Bobby start spending so much time together, Lori sets out to make Bobby jealous by hanging out with Clyde. This was actually a very interesting setup for the episode, and it manages to fit perfectly for the plot of the episode as well. What I really liked about this episode is the different perspective we get on a familiar story that could have easily been done with Lincoln. Seeing Lori step into the shoes of a plan Link would make for himself is refreshing to see, since she's clearly jealous and doesn't know what to do in order to make everyone happy in the end. Seeing Lori's plan backfire was fun, since she's trying to make Bobby come back to her, even despite the fact she was the one responsible for bringing him and Lincoln together together in the first place. And having her realize that there's nothing she can do since it was her fault was nice to see from somebody other than Lincoln. Physical comedy gags from Clyde were solid, Lucy was a pretty amusing character the moment she's on screen, and I dug the interaction from Lincoln and Bobby. It all nicely wraps up when Lincoln realizes that Lori is upset because she's not spending time with her boyfriend, so Lincoln convinces Bobby to start hanging out with Lori, but they can still be friends. The ending was really satisfied, and everyone got what they wanted leading to no one coming out looking bad. The rest of the episode also works too, with fun dialogue between the characters and funny situations with all four main characters at the fair, everything felt engaging from beginning to end. This is going in the glory house. I love this episode quite a bit. Hopefully we get to see more Laurie-centered episodes in the future. Episode 23A, One of the Boys. When Lincoln wishes that he had ten brothers instead of ten sisters, Lisa gives him a glimpse into that reality. So, we're only 43 episodes in, and we already have a gender swap episode. And it's understandable why a lot of people were really excited about it. Unfortunately, One of the Boys boys ended up becoming a very disgusting, unfunny, and unpleasant episode with a predictable story that's so poorly executed. At first in this new reality, Lincoln has a great time with his brothers, until he realizes how much he can't stand it as his brothers prove to be so much more unbearable. Here's my first major issue with the episode. It's how they portray both the brothers and the sisters. The writing portrays each gender in such a stereotypical and borderline sexist way. Basically, this episode says that all girls of different ages are so overbearing and uptight, while all boys of different ages are gross and inconsiderate. It seems like this was only done for comedy, which doesn't work since nothing in this episode is funny at all, as we're given so much gross humor that's cringe-inducing every time I rewatch it. 
In the sisters' case, they all seem to be doing the exact same thing in the episode, whether it's all going to the mall, which feels out of character for a lot of sisters, or the fact that all the sisters are so protective of Widow Winkin that they have to kiss his boo-boos or something like that. I'd be fine if it was sisters like Lenny, but no, all the sisters are doing it, and it feels so out of character. It just feels like they want to portray the sisters in such a stereotypical way. The brothers are much better either. They come across as so annoying, and they barely maintain the same personalities as the sisters. They're only there for an obstacle for Lincoln, and they're not you as well at all. If this episode was actually, say, 22 minutes, I think the writers could have actually fit a little bit more storytelling in here, but because it was only 11 minutes, it just feels so forced. Now, this was also done so that Lincoln can realize that he misses being with his sisters, but the problem is how it's executed, because it seems less like Lincoln actually misses his sisters and more that he can't stand and being with his brothers. I feel so little sympathy for Lincoln in this scenario, because to be honest, he got what he wanted, and he doesn't feel like he misses his sisters at all. It feels more forced than anything else. The moral could have actually worked here if it wasn't so poorly executed. And then of course, the writers had to end the episode with Lincoln's sisters mad at him and Lynn pulling his pants down. Seriously, why is she so loved again? In total, I can't stand this episode, and I'm easily gonna put this one Garbage in the- house. Episode 23B, A Tattler's Tale. Lolo wants to be a part of the sibling's secret club, but they won't let her in because of her tattletale tendencies. I love this episode so much. Even though Lola is the main antagonist of this episode, she still ends up being the one who learns the lesson the episode states, saying that you shouldn't use people's secrets as a way to make people do whatever you want from them. And when Lola reveals that she only did this as a way of spending time with her siblings, it lets us feel sorry for Lola, as she's actually pretty lonely and desperate to be with those she loves. I really enjoyed how Lola ended up being invited to the secrets meeting her siblings have, since she took the blame for all the things they did as a way of apologizing, which shows great development for Lola as a character. I really like the rest of the episode as well. Each sister gets a chance to shine, some of the dialogue was amusing, and of course seeing Lincoln being a spy and sneaking around is always fun to watch. The whole episode was just so much fun, and the message that they delivered was so spot on. This episode's going into the glory house. As long as the writers can keep writing Lola in this direction, she'll certainly be one of the better Loud sisters. Episode 24A, Funny Business. When Lincoln becomes Luann's clown assistant, he starts hogging the spot. Spotlight. While April Fool's Rules may have been an episode that portrayed Luann in a bad light, this episode actually portrays her in a good light. In this episode, I really related to how both Luann and Lincoln felt. I felt how it feels to be overshadowed by someone who isn't trying as hard as what you're good at. And I know how it feels to be forced into something you don't like, yet you find something to enjoy about it that ends up hurting someone else in the process. There was never a clear antagonist since both Lincoln and Luann are at fault here. Luann is at fault for hiring Lincoln by manipulating him with the cake she brings home from the parties, while Lincoln is also at fault for getting carried away with stealing Luann's spotlight at the shows. Both Lincoln and Luann are at fault, and when they put their differences aside for the sake of the business, they each learn their own lessons. Luann learns to put her own problems aside to help family when in need, while Lincoln learns not to get in the way of what Luann loves to do. Both are valuable lessons and are very well executed here. And the episode ends on a good note, with Lincoln and Luann laughing over falling on the whoopee cushions, which was really nice to see. There's not really much else to say. This episode was sweet, it was funny, it was enjoyable. It's going in the glory house. I really liked this episode. Episode 24B, Snowboard. The loud kids set out to show Lisa what is fun about Snow Day. There's not really too much for me to say about Snowboard, because it's just one of those episodes that doesn't really have anything interesting about it. I can't hate it, but I can't really love it either. Lisa does come as somewhat amusing in this episode, but by the end, she doesn't seem to have gotten anything out of the whole concept of a snow day. Instead, it was all a trick so she and her siblings can all go back to school. Some of the comedic moments were okay, but nothing that stands out. Compared to other episodes, I get why people may like this one, but for me, I'm just gonna put it in the average house. 
Episode 25A, The Price of Admission. After seeing a scary movie his parents told him not to see, Lincoln gets traumatized and is unable to sleep. To me, this episode feels more like a better version of Raw Deal, where Lincoln is scared that he's going to die at the hands of the Harvester, and unlike Raw Deal, where Lincoln is scared because of his stupid fortune, how no one seemed to care if it was actually true, in The Price of Admission, Lincoln is scared because it was his own fault for seeing the scary movie. I liked how Lincoln being more scared felt justified, and how he deals with this is more entertaining than in Raw Deal, where he's trying to hide and that was it. He stays up all night scared that he'll see the Harvester in his sleep, and that moment where he had a box of pizzas in his room and was talking to random objects was certainly something in a good way. And we do get moments where Lincoln suspects the Harvester is out to get him. It turns out it was all in his head. And the moral of this episode is solid as well, saying that you shouldn't lie to your parents because you will suffer consequences. My only real issue with this episode is that it is somewhat of a Lincoln torture episode, with the general mood of this episode being somewhat unpleasant, which I get the point, but it does knock it back for me. I also find the episode forgettable. Aside from a few moments, most of this episode doesn't stick out with me as much as other episodes I really like. Ultimately, her the final product. And on that note, I think this episode is best fit to go into the average house. It's not the best episode, but it's also not one of the worst. But hey, at least I managed to portray one of the bad episodes better. Episode 25B, One Flew Over the Loud House. A fluid vest the loud house, and those infected behave like zombies. This is by far one of the silliest episodes of season one, and it is glorious. I may not watch horror movies that much because I'm a real pussy when it comes to that, but this episode does a great job parodying horror movies. What's really good is that this episode knows it's being stupid and it takes full advantage of it. The over-the-top nature of the siblings sick like zombies was funny. The dialogue between Lincoln and his sister is not sick was amusing. But probably the biggest surprise for me came with Lenny, who actually felt sorry for everyone sick and just wanted to help them even despite Lincoln telling her not to. I liked how we got a character who felt sympathetic and wanted to help, and Lenny being that character for this story was very fitting, and she was still very enjoyable in the episode. My only real complaint with this episode would have to be the ending. After everything the siblings go through, and after all of Lenny's attempts to help everyone get better, she suddenly gets sick at the end. And I know that this is supposed to be silly, and it's not supposed to be anything serious, but it just doesn't really rub me in the right way. Lenny was spending the whole episode trying so so hard to make sure that everyone was feeling better, including Lincoln, but then she gets sick and she has the same problem as everyone else. But other than that, this is a very enjoyable episode that many people need to see. I'm gonna put this episode in the glory house. Episode 26A, Study Muffin. When Lincoln gets a tutor to help him study, all his sisters fall in love with him. This is another one of those episodes where I hear a lot of people didn't really like because of the behavior of the sisters. But honestly, I really like this episode. Similar to One Flew Over the Loud House, it's supposed to be played as silly, and it actually kind of works. What I like about this episode is that we get two different points of view on crushes boys and girls each have, but gives each side enough differences to stand out, yet also get the point across about how kids getting crushes on very attractive older people makes them turn into mush. For girls, they become lovestruck and hyperactive with fantasies about what they'll be like together, even though in reality it will never happen, and they're somewhat aware of that since Hugh is older than the sisters and has no plans to get together with one of them. For boys, they become lovestruck and lose focus on what's in front of them. And while this feels somewhat stereotypical to assume how each gender reacts when they have a crush, it never feels like one gender is torturing the other gender just to get a quick laugh and solutions are actually given to help, mostly for Lincoln failing his class since, well, that is the main focus of the episode. And the positives keep on coming. I like the over-the-top behavior given from the sisters with their crush on Hugh, and Lisa's face towards Hugh just made me laugh so much. I really liked how we just got two different perspectives on both genders having crushes, Lynn Sr. being more fascinated with Hugh than being lovestruck, which I found pretty amusing, and I like how Lincoln managed to solve his problem thanks to Lisa with everything ending on a high note. I don't really get why many people don't like this episode, it's funny, and it does offer an interesting perspective on both genders when it comes to crushes. I'm gonna put it in the glory house. I don't care what people say. I like this episode, even if they don't. 
Episode 26B, Homespun. The kids complain about their house, but when a tornado threatens to destroy it, they start to feel differently. I know it seems a little bit early for comparisons, but I'm going to start comparing this episode to a Season 2 episode called The Whole Picture, which I will talk about more when I do a Season 2 video. This episode focuses on both the embarrassing moments of living in the house with its complications, but also the benefits of living in the house as well. And unlike the whole picture, it's all balanced out to show good and bad times. Because in the whole picture's case, they were just reminiscing of embarrassing memories and it didn't really work for me. Another thing missing from the whole picture that's perfectly placed here are heartwarming moments that fit. While the whole picture had flashbacks focusing on younger Lincoln in embarrassing moments and nothing else, Homespun features embarrassing moments from all the members of the family balanced out with very sweet moments they all made in the house. All the siblings get a chance to shine with no one underused, and the humor is very well executed throughout, and the ending was sweet, as the mailman says the family's house was hit hard, but Leakin just says, that's what it usually looks like, but it's our home. As the 11 minutes showed the siblings learning to accept their house the way it is, and realize all the great memories they've had in it together. I found this episode pretty darn sweet and very likable. I'm definitely putting this episode in the glory house. I hope to see more Slice of Life episodes focus on the whole family, because it just helps showcase what makes The Loud House one of my favorite cartoons of all time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all 52 episodes of The Loud House Season 1 reviewed. Alright, let's move on to the statistics. And I'll be honest, after adding all these statistics together, I could not believe how close these episodes were. 22 episodes in the glory house, 15 episodes in the average house, and 15 episodes in the garbage house. When I rewatched this season, I was honestly not expecting all of these ranks to be so close with each other. So, what's my ranking for season 1 as a whole? Well, I was thinking about it for a little bit, deciding on whether or not I wanted to call it good or average, but after much hours of thinking, I think I'm gonna have to say, Season 1 of The Loud House is average. Now, don't get me wrong guys, I love this show so much, and Season 1 provided so many episodes that I absolutely love, and there were plenty of good episodes that made me a fan of the show. But I couldn't call this season good just because all of the episodes were so mixed together. If there was like a lot of good episodes and very little average and garbage, then yeah, I would have easily given this season a good. But because of how many average and bad episodes were in this season, combined with all the good episodes, it was very hard for me to actually call this season good. And I know that shows usually have a rough star, and I can cut The Loud House some slack, because it is only the first season season. I have a feeling that the seasons going on are going to get better and hopefully not end up in some kind of seasonal rot. But if people are going to remember what makes The Loud House so great, I don't think season one is going to be the season many people remember. With that out of the way, it's time to talk about my top five episodes of season one. Now keep in mind, these are the episodes that I picked out that I think stood out the best for all of them. There are still plenty of good episodes this season, but these are the ones that stuck out the most to me. Number five, Cover Girls. This was just a fun episode that had all of the siblings working together in a very good way. Number four, A Tattler's Tale. One of the best episodes that portrays Lola in a way that we wish that she would be developed more throughout the series. And we know she eventually will. Number three, For Bros About to Rock. One of those episodes that actually gives one of the sisters some actual backstory and manages to portray them in a way that makes them so damn likable. Number two, House Music. The best episode that Luna has ever been in, and is one of her best portrayals that actually feels somewhat fresh. And number one, Project Loud House. Again, this episode should have been the pilot, but it's a perfect episode that portrays all the characters in exactly the right ways, having all the characters shine in many creative ways, full of good heart and good comedy. And now it's time to talk about the bottom five episodes, the worst of the worst, and unfortunately enough, episodes that may even end up on my top ten worst episodes of The Loud House. Even if the show continues on, these are episodes I certainly don't want to revisit. Number 5, Sleuther Consequences, by far one of the most unpleasant episodes that paints all the sisters in such a bad spot. 
Number four, making the case. A wasted potential that makes all the characters come across as selfish and unlikable. Number three, it's a four times loud house. It's way too over-exaggerated, none of the characters learn their lessons, and the whole thing just feels so unfunny and cringeworthy. Number two, Sound of Silence, an episode that wrongfully punishes Lincoln for not doing anything wrong and just trying to have some peace and quiet, and almost made Lola one of the worst characters in the show. And number one, to no one's surprise, The Greenhouse, an episode that frustrates me in so many ways, because every single character is so unlikable, the plot is so botched, and his message of making sure the environment is good for kids is so badly portrayed, it actually makes SpongeBob's Last Stand actually look good. And that about wraps things up for my Loud House video, folks. Before I end this, I want to give out a few special thanks. First off, I want to thank the leader of Talking Loud, Andrew Brower, for providing me many of the points I was able to bring up when making these reviews. Also, special thanks goes to many of the people in Talking Loud for supporting me throughout my journey of making this video, and of course, thanks goes to the Loud House Wiki for providing me information and all of the right details I needed to make this video. And of course, a huge thank Thanks to everyone who is being patient and supporting me throughout my journey of making this. And of course, to all my subscribers and to the Talking Loud subscribers, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the Loud House Season 2 video.